Ella's Night Lights by Lucy Fleming. Nestled in a little nook of an old oak tree lived a teeny tiny girl. Her name was Ella. Ella had two fluffy antennae and soft feathery wings, just like a moth. Because Ella's wings were so delicate and fine, she couldn't go out in the sun. Ella's biggest wish was to see the sunrise. When Ella awoke at night and the moon was high, she flittered and flew, collecting light. She was drawn to everything that glowed and glimmered in the darkness. She chased after twinkling stars, flickering lamplight, and even little pebbles that reflected the light of the moon. Then Ella would share the light she had gathered with anyone who needed help finding their way in the dark. And every time she shared her light, Ella would whisper, Here's some bright light. Here's a night light. A little ray to calm your fright. There was always someone who needed a little bit of light. One evening, Ella spotted a fox, all alone. He looked cold and tired. Here, Ella said to the fox, whose name was Sable, Here's some bright light, here's a night light, a little ray to calm your fright. After that, Ella and Sable searched for shimmering light together, and Sable always made sure that Ella was back before the sun rose. On another night that winter, as Ella flew through the swirling snow, she saw a little owl who was scared and all alone in the high branches of a tree. Don't be afraid, Ella said to the owl, whose name was Luna. Take my hand. Here's some bright light. Here's a night light. A little ray to calm your fright. Ella's nights were now filled with fun. Luna, Seva, and Ella drew twinkling pictures, made flickering shadow puppets, and played together beneath the bright moon. But when the sun would begin to rise, the fun would end, and Ella had to return home to her shady little nook. Nestled beside Ella, Sable thought about how Ella always shared her light, how she helped creatures, both big and little. So Sable gathered all of Ella's forest friends and they came up with a plan. Remembering how Ella had helped her fly fearlessly, Luna soared higher than ever before and sliced a piece of the starry sky. While Ella slept during the day, her friends secretly snipped and stitched, gathered and glued. At the end of a busy night, just before the shining start of a new day, Ella's friends found her as she was heading home. Finally, the moment had arrived to show Ella what they'd been making. Come with us, everyone said excitedly. Ella could hardly believe her eyes. They had made a den of darkness that would protect her wings from the sun. Ella was able to watch the dazzling sun rise for the first time. Wow, such bright light, the morning light. What a wish come true to see this sight. From then on, 
Ella and her friends shared every bright day together. The end. Thank you for reading with me. Now we have a craft. We're going to be making an origami star jar that also works as a nightlight. Here's what you'll need. A glass jar, some paper, colored or plain, a ruler, a pencil, some scissors, and a battery-powered light. First, choose which paper you want to use. I had some silver paper, so I used that for the stars. And get your ruler. You just need thin strips of paper for this craft, so use your ruler to make a straight line near the edge of your paper. Try to make sure that the strip of paper is about the same width all the way down. Then cut it out. The first step is tying a knot on the very edge of the strip. Be careful not to pull so hard that you rip the paper, but there shouldn't be any gaps between edges. When you flatten it out, which is the next step, you'll have a five-sided shape like this, which is called a pentagon. On either side of your flattened out knot, you'll have a long tail and a short tail. You can fold the short tail over. Then take the long tail and start wrapping it around the shape. It might be easier for you to just flip the shape over and over again until there's no tail left. Each time you do this, you're folding the tail over the edge of the shape. When there's only a little bit left over, take the leftover piece and tuck it under. Any part that pokes through on the other side, you can just rip off. Now, use your nails and fingertips to pinch and poke the corners of the star into shape. Basically, you're making indents in the middle of each side of the pentagon. This puffs it up and makes it look like a star. And there you go! That's it! It can take some practice though, so don't feel bad if your first one comes out a little crumpled looking. Keep practicing and I'm sure you'll get it. A direction sheet might also help you learn. Here's one from the Origami Resource Center. I put the link in the description. Let's do it together one more time with white paper. Tie in a knot, pull it tight, flatten it, fold over the extra, and wrap the long tail around and around the shape, folding the strip over each time it goes off the edge. Tuck the extra underneath like you're putting it in a pocket, pull it through and tear off the extra. Use your fingers and nails to pinch the shape into a star. And that can be the finished craft, but after you've made a few of these, there's something else you can do. They say that if you make a hundred of these stars, you get a wish, but you don't really need that many for this craft. Take a clear jar, turn on a battery-powered light, and put it inside. Then fill up the rest of the jar with the stars you made. It's best if they at least cover the light. If you look closely, it already looks like the stars are glowing a bit, but this is a night light. So the next step, turn off the light. And that's how you make a starlight night light. If you're really struggling to make the stars, you can always cut out star shapes and glue them to the inside of the jar instead. I'm sure your crafts came out great. We'd love to see them. So if you feel like sharing, look in the description to find out how. Thank you for joining me for story time. I hope you had fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.